Coming up on this episode of Welcome to Taiwan, Damien and I explore the colorful and natural marvel that is Hualien. Taiwan! <laughs> we have some incredible adventures and we learn a lot about a very special culture here that we had no idea existed. This, this tradition, this festival is just about putting shit on fire and spitting rice wine on each other. Hashtag life. <laughs> And we also trek one of the world's most unique and dangerous nature trails. I think this is the craziest hike I've ever done in my life. <sighs> so buckle in because this episode is going to be next level epic. This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. To find out how to get two months free access to their wealth of online classes, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. And we're back. Welcome to another episode here in Taiwan, and we are in Hualien. This episode, as you'll see, has got lots of like cool adventurous stuff planned. Hualien is kind of like the capital of adventure and trekking and uh, water sports and things like that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather's going to hold out for us. Yeah, it's going to be a great episode. I'm really looking forward to explore Hualien. So, what do you reckon we go and get a dip? Yeah, hopefully the water's not freezing. Yes, it was great to be finally here in Walian. This is the place we've most been looking forward to because here you can really immerse yourself in the indigenous local culture and stunning nature. And what a better way to start our first morning than by taking a dip in this local stream in just 10 minute cycle from downtown. These man-made tracks you see here are for the fish to swim up during spawning season as many of the rivers here have been widened to help combat flash flooding. This human input means that the wildlife here needs a little help to get back to their proper breeding grounds. This spot is also perfect to just come and cool off and enjoy some peace and quiet and to really connect with Taiwan's nature. It's also great to hang out with a handful of locals who also come down here for a morning dip. If you're going to be in Hualien and you want an afternoon dip, just come up here. We'll leave the location in the description and we'll just call it the Fishery Waterfall because it's all in Chinese, you don't know the name. Really cool, cool place, especially when you see the locals just coming here with their swimming goggles to come swim. It's beautiful. And then this Chinese couple were just like, hoi, hey, hoi, hoi, and we were like, okay, that means get in the truck. Yes, cheers! Cheers, bro. <laughs> you can try this. Mm. Yeah. Mmm. Pork, pork. Chicharron. Chicharron. What? Yeah. The sesame. Pork skin. No? Chicharron. No, 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 no. no. Oh, that's so good, right? I love chicharron. No. Chicharron I love that. Oh, it looks really good. Chicken um, butt. Yeah, chicken, chicken butt. Ah, let's do one. Chicken eggs. <laughs> chicken eggs. <laughs> 
Yeah, let us introduce you to Jason. He's a tattoo artist from Walien, a newly made hustle owner. He's also freaking hilarious and one of the most colorful characters we've ever met. And yeah, as you can see, he really welcomes travelers as family guests. He was also very keen to teach us about his indigenous tribe who mostly live in and around this area. But before he took us to meet a local tribal family, he wanted me to try a special kind of nut called betel nut, the local tobacco equivalent. Okay. So usually you just eat like this Entire, way. Yeah. Whole thing. Whole thing. And then chewing, like chewing gun. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, you're gonna try it. My first time betel nut. Yeah, betel nut. Betel, betel, betel nut. Okay. Keep chewing, and then have a lot of juice come out, and then until you cannot hold it, you just spit it out. Okay. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Three or five minutes, you will feel like your body warm, mm. and your stomach like. Mm. Okay. Well, it's not that bad. Okay, like in the beginning, it's like, ooh. But is it like cigarette? Is it? It does it have a? No, it's just like I'm, It's just like I'm chewing a piece of wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Later that evening, Jason invited us over to his friend's family's place as he was keen for us to get to know some of the local tribal families, try out some of their foods, and to just dive a little deeper into this unique part of Taiwan's culture. Wow, that smells so delicious. Yeah, smells so good, right? Yeah. Ooh. Prawns, lemongrass, and uh, chicken soup. This super cute family welcomed us into their home, and even though they didn't speak any English, with the help of Jason, we were having great chats about life here in Walien. And we wasted no time in getting stuck into the huge amounts of food lying around. We call that pepper shrimp. Pepper shrimp. But different kind of pepper shrimp. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. <laughs> How do you say uh, enjoy your meal? Like, no, we don't have to. We just say. <laughs> Start it. <laughs> Let's go. What up? <laughs> Welcome to Taiwan, babe. Why did they put this on here? Because apparently I look indigenous. <laughs> the older you get, the more feathers you get. No, no, no. Oh. But that's only like warrior. Like oh, you are okay. third place, or you are second level, you or three. Like, 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 like father's level. Uh -huh. You can get this one. After uh -huh. that, you have to take off. And how how to show you like how how tough you are, how how good you are. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. We can see this feather. This side, they show that because we got we we have this hunting bird season. So when you got like special spur, means like got good skill. So you show everything like this year, what kind of special thing you hunt. You can put that thing in this bed, in okay. this side. That's so bad. we show the people yeah, like, know. yeah, how tough I'm not. Like. I'm a badass mother lover. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is means ear. That's so when you have a hat, you got ear, can listen. If you're a kid, you don't listen, you don't understand, so you don't have a ear. Oh. Yeah. Hey. That's swag right here. <laughs> yeah, dance. What dance? Warrior dance. Like I don't want to offend anyone. A like warrior dance. <laughs> show me how to do like a. Oh, move. like this. No, no, we don't do that. Way. You don't do that. Okay, then yeah. do that. We just be cool and look. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. What do I have to do? Show me what to do. Like, just yeah. stand in and just look. Just stand right. in. Yeah, just look. <laughs> Uh, no, too much, too much. Too much. Too the much. face, too much. Okay. Just nature. No, yeah. No, no, no. Smile a little bit. Just a little bit. It is shipping. No, just joking. <laughs> okay, okay. We finished dinner. And after Damien's tried on the local dress, we had a few beers. And for some reason, they want to put lipstick on him now. Did you feel like a little bit oily? Hey? I feel oily, oily for you, dude. Ah! <laughs> 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 After a fun-filled night and with our bellies set to burst and our arteries blocked for eternity with cholesterol, 
it was time to head back to the hostel because we had a very, very early start the next day. Yeah, good morning from the Qin Shui Cliffs. These mountains rise up to over 2,000 meters and dive directly into the Pacific Ocean to create these incredible structures. This is something you have to come visit if you're here in Hualien. There are a lot of ways to see them. You can drive along the coast and even take a train. But I had arranged something extra special. We were going to see the cliffs from below with a kayak on the ocean to get up really close to these big giants. We had a 3 a.m. pickup and a one hour drive so that we could learn the basics of kayaking and driving ATVs as we would need to drive along the pebble beaches to reach the starting point. We reached the ocean's edge and pushed out to sea to get our first glimpse as the sun was rising due east. The weather was moody and with the dark clouds and the low-lying mist, an eerie atmosphere was surrounding us as these majestic cliffs were brought to life in the morning light. We paddled around for some time before the couple that we came with had to call it off early as seasickness was setting in. Is she okay? But instead of calling off the entire adventure, the tour company decided to take us back to shore so we could continue exploring the coast on the quad bikes. All we had to do was make it back to dry land first. Yeah, that landing wasn't the smoothest and we had to lick our wounds a little while. But we got over it and jumped on the ATVs and didn't let being cold and wet get in the way of us having some adventure. Just a weird morning swim. <laughs> feels great, mate. It feels bloody great. Bloody great. Woo. High five to a ran <laughs> random morning. I feel like a handicapped turtle. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. Go back home now. Okay? <laughs> Taiwan, you beautiful vibe. Try to sing every day. Waiting for that little girl. Sing a song to me beneath the marquee. Oh, my love. We jumped back on the ATVs and we rode around some more. The guides gave us a tour of the area for about an hour and it was a total blast from the start to finish. By the time we got to the hostel, had our lunch and had a well-deserved nap, it was already the evening and Jason came round and picked us up to take us to a very special local tribal festival. 
Here in Walien, there are six distinct tribes, and this one in particular is the Sakizaya tribe. The Sakizaya are a Taiwanese Aboriginal tribe with a population as little as 5,000. They are most culturally, linguistically, and genetically tied to other Austronesian ethnic groups that can be found in the Philippines, Malaysia, Madagascar, and Oceania. And these are the Zakizaya witches. As you can see, they are going around spitting rice wine on everyone. This is just a local custom, a blessing, and a way of cleansing any curses that you may have on your soul. They also cast spells and call upon the spirits to bless the offerings that you can see here that will be later burnt as part of the climax of the evening. <laughs> the local songs and dances were incredible to watch and I started to feel really at home here since being half Filipino I am certain that I have a little tribal blood running through my veins But this is awesome, this is really really cool, this is such a lovely surprise yeah. And uh, my little aboriginal brother here feels very at home <laughs> Yeah I do, I do actually People are looking at him like, wait what tribe is he from? <laughs> They're just putting... This, this tradition, this festival, is just about putting shit on fire and spinning rice wine on each other. Hashtag life. <laughs> wow. So what we're going to do is we're going to carefully walk around, make sure we don't get in anybody's way, and just enjoy this awesome experience. This festival is called Palama. Palama in the language of the Sakizaya means to be reborn back to glory. Sadly, this tribe was almost completely wiped out during the Japanese invasion. The last few remaining survivors had to hide within another tribe called the Amis tribe. And so today, both of these tribes come together once a year. The Sakizaya give thanks and blessings to the Amis tribe for saving the lives of their last few surviving ancestors. Before the climax of the evening with the traditional burning of the house, the witches were called back out to pray to the gods to stop the rain. They must have been out there for 20 minutes in the pouring rain, praying, spitting loads more rice wine and calling for the rain to stop. Incredibly, the rain did stop and the burning of the house could begin. This is a replica of one of their old tribal homes and they make prayers to call back to the spirits of their ancestors to invite them to the ceremony. And once they felt the spirits of the ancestors around them, the elders of both tribes walked slowly to the house and set it on fire. Oh, 
as the house burned, everyone felt the warmth of the fire and the warmth of being connected back to their ancestors. This was a privilege and a huge pleasure to have been able to witness and to learn something completely new about Taiwan and this surprisingly rich cultural heritage we had no idea existed. Early next morning, it was our last day in Walian. And we were super excited because we had saved the best for last. We made our way towards the Taroko National Park because we had a permit to walk the J. Lu Old Trail, Taiwan's most breathtaking nature trail and a true nerve-wracking sensation, not for the faint of heart. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Taroko National Park. It is gorgeous here, absolutely gorgeous. Taroko is the name of the local tribe people who used to live in this national park called the Taroko tribe. There are yeah. dozens of trails in this national park and you can do all of them at different levels of ability and skill and difficulty. Yeah. Um, but the only one you need a, uh, a permit for is this trail. Um, it was quite complicated and I'm not going to bore you with the process but if you are interested in doing this trail I'll leave the information below. There was a really useful blog post that I used and it was completely free to get the permit. We only had to pay $200 um, or about 5 US dollars to, to, to get in uh, to do the trail. You needed your passport and the permit. And look at this, this is the start of the trail. Woo! Beautiful! And apparently it gets pretty gnarly up there so We'll bring you along and show you because we're really, really excited. And this suspension bridge is really bouncy. <laughs> Are you excited? Um, yes, I am. What a beautiful day as well we've chosen. Not much clouds or mist yet. Gorge? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a worse joke ever. <laughs> well, I've done worse. This trail is extremely special for several reasons and because of that only 100 people a day are granted permits to enter. The most important reason as you will see is that the path gets pretty freaking dangerous. So if bad weather hits the trail it will be closed and all permits will be cancelled. So just pray for good weather and get on the trail as early as you can. Sweaty. So far so good, it is actually more like a jungle trek we were just saying than a mountain pass just because at this altitude it's still very thick jungle, humid, hot. Monkeys everywhere. Monkeys, yeah. I don't like monkeys. Poisonous them. snakes we're on the lookout for and spiders. This is a rel relatively easy hike. Famous last words. <laughs> But listen to the bugs. Pretty cool. After the initial hot and humid jungle stage, you appear through a much darker forest and the path becomes a little bit more mysterious. You know that you're super high up, but the views down below are constantly blocked by thick forest. But eventually, out of nowhere, it reveals itself to you and you finally realize just how high you really are. Welcome 
the middle of the cliff. <laughs> this is about as narrow as it gets, right? So I don't far. Know. Maybe it gets more narrow. I hope so. But uh, if you're scared of heights, it's a little bit dodgy. But luckily, they've got this. Yeah. You can see the cars down there. They look like ants. Gives you that feeling in your balls. Imagine how it must have been for the people who made this. Well, I heard that they widened it. Oh, they wi- Yeah, like, I, I, yeah, exactly. Like, it used to be like only 30 centimeters wide. Imagine, 30 centimeters. That's like 30 centimeters. Crazy. Like, like this, like, like, like this. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> <laughs> Earthquake test! <laughs> I'm wondering like what kind of stone it is. Limestone? Maybe? It just comes apart. Yeah. And this is what we're walking on. Yeah. Feel safe. I feel so secure right now. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no Never mind. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. Ah! <laughs> is there a trail like this anywhere? I don't think so. This is amazing. I think this is the craziest hike I've ever done in my life. <sighs> oh my god. I have a fear of heights. I conquered it. But now, hmm. I think I didn't conquer it yet. <laughs> there wasn't really much we could say to each other on this trail. We were just totally blown away by the extreme beauty all around us. Turn after turn, there were just incredible views and we just took it slow and steady, keeping a very close eye on our footsteps. We were trying to compare this earlier, weren't we? But there's nothing you can compare this to. Can, can, yeah, this is like so unique. Yeah, it's not like you can go, oh, this reminds me of that time. Yeah. I did a lot of hikes, but no. Incredible. Uh, oh, yeah. <sighs> we should have brought some beers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Back down the main road, we picked up our bags and decided there was no more scenic place to hitchhike than Taroko National Park. 
we wanted to head out to our very last destination here in Taiwan and give ourselves enough time for the final and biggest challenge of this series. Okay, this is the end of the Wallian episode. We are here on the road. We're heading to a new destination for the final episode. We have a very big, our biggest challenge in the final so far, episode. So um, so stay tuned for that. We're not going to let you know what it is just yet, but we'll see you in the next one. Uh, Walien was amazing, wasn't it? So much to do here. I really liked um, learning about the Aboriginal and the tribal stuff here, especially with you being so into it and having a bloodline in there somewhere. somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> and how everybody was like, oh, Damien, what tribe are you from? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm Filipino, dude. Hello. 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 Anyway, we're going to try and do this. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank our amazing long-term sponsor on this channel in Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and much more. And if you use our link in the description below, you can get yourself a free trial for two months. So you can get access to all of their amazing courses and start leveling up your abilities in pretty much anything that you want to for free for two whole months. And if you'd like to continue, Skillshare is also super affordable as an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So join more than 7 million other creators learning with Skillshare. We especially like Matty Brown's course on low budget filmmaking. And we took lots of cool tips about in-camera effects and simple tricks you can do in the editing process that can help make cheap camera gear appear high level and professional. So thank you so much to Skillshare and we will see you very soon. Thank you.